Hey guys, welcome to another Star Wars book review where it's my goal to look at the Star Wars Legends material for the very first time and discuss it here on the channel. Now last time we looked at the novelization of Return of the Jedi and now we will be moving forward and looking at the first installment in the Lando Calrissian Adventures, Lando Calrissian and the Mind Harp of Sheru. Lando Calrissian and the Mind Harp of Sheru was released in 1983 and was written by L. Neil Smith and follows the story of a young Lando Calrissian who has just won the Millennium Falcon and is now in a game of sabacc where he wins a low ton of money as well as winning a droid that he has to go to the Rafa system to pick up and discovers that this droid is much more than he bargained for and is very different from any droid that he has ever come across and soon he gets involved in people and politicians of the Rafa system that want him to go on an adventure to find the mysterious Mind Harp of Sheru that can be used to control the people of the Rafa system. I was really intrigued by the Lando Calrissian adventures because I was a big fan of Brian Daly's Han Solo Adventures trilogy and I was hoping for the same fun ride that I had with those novels. But as I was getting closer, I was getting nervous because I was afraid that these weren't going to hold up as well as those books. And I read the first novel and I can sadly say now that this was a huge disappointment from the Brian Daly Han Solo Adventures trilogy, and yeah, I was just really disappointed with this book. But before we get into my disappointments with the book, let me go into some of the positives I have with this novel in particular. I want to say that the opening chapter of this book is really entertaining, where Lando is in this game of sabacc, and this is the first time that Sabacc is introduced into the Star Wars universe because we learn that um, Lando and Han were in a game of cards, basically, and that's how Han won the Millennium Falcon. But here we kind of learn about, like, what the game was that he played, Sabacc. And it's a really entertaining scene where we're getting Lando basically cheating, and we get to learn a little bit about what the game is all about. And that's a lot of fun here, and it's really enjoyable. I also really love the climax of this book in particular, when they are on their adventure, Lando goes inside this giant pyramid-like temple, and he's in there for, you know, a couple of days, but it turns out to be like months' time has no correlation at all within this temple, and it's really cool. There's some interesting stuff going on, like Lando thinks he's starting to hallucinate. It's really entertaining to read, and there's just a lot of good stuff. It feels very much like how the last Han Solo book was, where it was very much inspired by... Indiana Jones in a lot of ways, and I thought that was really cool and a lot of fun, and I really did enjoy that stuff in particular. But what I loved most of all in this book was the character of Vufi Ra, who is the droid that Lando gets a hold of, which is a very different droid from um, what I'm used to in the Star Wars universe. And it's basically this five-pointed, um, it's like a five-pointed star with these tentacles. And he's got this one red eye, and he's, he's really interesting and very funny as well. I, I wasn't expecting to laugh as much as I did at his dialogue. And um, I just really like this character, and he's definitely the best addition to this book. I thought he brought something very different to this novel when I feel like if he wasn't there, the novel would be a little bit standard, but I thought he brought some life to it. I was really interested in what he was, and we don't really get a clear answer. He doesn't even know who created him, and I think that's something that we're probably going to learn as this trilogy goes along, but overall, I really liked Vufi Roth 
even though it took me forever to get used to that really, really silly name. And even Lando in the book admits that it's kind of a silly name, but I, I, I liked him nonetheless. And sadly, that is my positives with this book. The rest of it is either stuff I don't like or I'm just disappointed by it. And I'll start with what I am disappointed by most, and that is Lando Calrissian in this book. Okay, now, you know, writers have different ways of expressing characters, especially well-established characters, and I think, you know, there's a right way to do it, and there's also a wrong way to do it, and L. Neil Smith, while I was reading this, I never felt like I was reading Lando Calrissian. Now, I know Lando's supposed to be much younger in this book. I mean, he doesn't even have the mustache, um, but I just, I never felt like I was reading Lando Calrissian. I felt like I was just reading, it was kind of like I was reading Han Solo a little bit, and it didn't feel like the character that I had known. Now, that could just be me being like, well, you know, he's not the character that I know, so he's bad, but it just felt like it could have been any other character and also his dialogue is really weird and gets on my nerves sometimes because like there's just times where it just feels awkward and that's a problem I have most of all with like most of the dialogue in this book is everyone talks rather odd and I, I just couldn't get into it and it was really hard getting into it as well and also I was so disappointed with like how this book was really really structured kind of poorly um as I said I really liked the opening scene of this book and I liked um a couple of the scenes afterwards and then I really liked the ending but this middle of the book is just filled with pretty much nothing I mean, I hate saying that nothing literally happens because obviously stuff happens, but the plot doesn't move forward much in the middle of this book, and it feels like we're just meandering until we finally get to the third act, and that is mostly what happens in this book, and it was extremely dull to read, it was extremely boring, and I just I couldn't get into it, not to mention that just the pacing overall in this book is really off. I mean, I complained a lot about the pacing in um, the Star Wars novelization and then Splinter of the Mind's Eye with Alan Dean Foster, but I owe him an apology because at least stuff was going on in it and the plot was continuously going on. There was revelations, there was new information coming at every moment, here, it's just a slog to get through until we get to the final end where it just wraps up really quickly, and I hated that. There's also this annoying little bit that could have been really fun. Um, there's this ongoing joke where Voofy Ra keeps telling Lando, like, keeps calling him, Yes, Master, Master, and Lando keeps retorting back to him saying, you know, don't call me master, and that could be really fun, but he says it like 50 times in this book. I mean, it's not really 50 times, but it just, it, it's too much, and it's a continuous joke that no longer lands after you say it the third or fourth or fifth time, and that was really, really annoying. But yeah, most of my complaints really come from the writing as well as the characterization of Lando Calrissian. Now, I do wonder in the next books, since, you know, Lando is getting his mustache, maybe he will eventually turn into that character that we know and love. But as of now, like, I just didn't feel like I was reading Lando Calrissian. Like, I tried to imagine Billy D. Williams or even um, Donald Glover saying these lines, and it just didn't work for me. Um, but yeah, I, I was disappointed with this book, guys. It's not a bad book. I mean, it's not as bad as how I thought Splinter of the Mind's Eye was, which was extremely disappointing. 
but it's definitely one that like I was really looking forward to and just completely let down by. This is definitely like the second worst book that I've read of the Star Wars books so far. I I think it has some good moments in it, as I said, the beginning and the ending, and Boofy Raw in particular really kept me interested and invested, but overall I just found this book too messy and with very little going on and very little story investment. But I hope that L. Neil Smith can work out those kinks in the sequels and maybe we can get something better with the next two novels. But yep, that's all I gotta say about this book. I'm gonna give Lando Calrissian and the Mind Harp of Sheru a 6 out of 10. So would I recommend this book? Not really. Only to the Star Wars fanatics that want to read every single book in the Star Wars Legends material, and also if you want to continue on with the Lando Adventures trilogy, then, you know, this is, you gotta start here, and maybe it will get better, but we'll see when I get to that. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching. Next time, I will be looking at the second installment, Lando Calrissian and the Flame Wind of Oceon. Looking forward to that. A little skeptical, but let's hope we have some fun with it. But thank you guys for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review.